So we got three books we're buying today. The Workers of the Vineyard, The Tower of hey Dad, Babel. Wait, wait, wait. We have to pay for money. Oh boy. Pay and Paul's money. Great Basket Caper. So Jack, which book should we read today? Um, okay. The the Paul's no, that one, that This one? one? Okay. Wait, now we do. We have to Come on, we got to get ready. The people are waiting out there. They can't wait to hear about Paul's Great Basket Caper. And we can find that in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 25 and verse 31. So, Jack, look at this. A couple thousand years ago, a man named Saul went to and fro. He did the very best he could to do what he considered good. He was a man who had a plan, and very quickly he began to put all Jesus' friends in jail and never let them out on bail. Hey, Jack, this guy Paul right here, look at him, Jack. Look at Paul. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Paul? Look at Paul. Right here's Paul. He's going to put everybody who likes Jesus in jail. Can you believe it? Why? Because he was mean. Paul was mean. He was going to put everybody like who liked Paul. and loved Jesus in jail. It's like Bad Paula. Right there's Paul. No, it's like Bad Paula. Bad Paula? Yeah. <laughs> You're goofy. Who's a Bad Paula? It's like Paul. Like Paul is like the name Paula, sort of. A girl would be named Paula, and a man would be named Paul. How cool is that? Okay. But then on the Damascus yeah. road, yeah, I don't like him, do we? But watch, watch what Jesus does. But then on the Damascus road, he saw a brilliant light that glowed. Look, Jack, stop with that. On the Damascus road, he saw a brilliant light that glowed. See what I have to do? I have to stick it literally in his face. Look at that. Okay, it's time to put that down. Okay, so here, let's listen to this page. But then on the Damascus road, he saw a brilliant light that glowed. There's a bright light. Look here. A voice said, Saul, can you not see that you are persecuting me? The brilliant light was powerful. The voice was so incredible. The vision so immensely strong. Saul realized that he had been wrong. On the road to Damascus, Jesus got a hold of him. Is that, is that That's Paul? Saul. That's Saul right there. Was Paul. Oh, sorry. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, he's, he's Saul right now, but his name changes to Paul. Did I tell you Paul before? Yeah. Yeah, I meant to say Saul. That's good. Uh, Jack picked up that I called him. His name is Paul. After God got a hold of him, he named him Paul, but it was Saul before that. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I, I messed up, but you caught on. Very good. Okay, let's listen now. Let's listen. So we'll start this page again. But then on the Damascus road, he saw a brilliant light that glowed. A voice what? said, Saul, can you not see that you are persecuting me? Who's, who's yelling Saul? Who's telling him that? Who's Saul persecuting? He didn't want the people who liked Jesus. Hey. He wanted to put them in jail. Jesus. Jesus is talking to him now. The brilliant light was so powerful. The voice was so incredible. The vision so immensely strong. Saul realized that he had been wrong. So now he's realizing he had been wrong. Then all of life was changed for Saul. He even became known as Paul. So now his name was changed to Paul. His enmity came to an end and Jesus was his dearest friend. So at one point in time, he was uh, God, Jesus. He was a Jesus' enemy here until the road of Damascus. Now he's like best pals with Jesus. They're like great friends. Do you look at this, Jack? Just lay it down there. Lay it down there. Thank you. Put it away. Thank you. Put it. Away. Thank you. Okay. Come on over here. No, look away. Come on. Then all of life was changed for Saul. He even became known as Paul. His enmity came to an end, and Jesus was his dearest friend. Now he told everyone it's true that Jesus lived and died for you. 
He paid for all of your sins, he said, hey, after and he has talk, risen hey, from the dead. After you talk to him, I want it to go blah, Okay. To see that TV. Okay. See so TV. Jesus died for us. Jesus died for Saul before he was even Paul. Jesus loved Saul even when he was bad. Jesus loves everyone. But look at this. This so enraged Paul's former friends. Just think they said what this portends. If, if folks believe what they are told, we'll soon be left out in the cold. Look, they're really angry. They don't like it that he's Paul now. They like the old saw who was mean and hateful because they're mean and hateful too. Look at their angry looking faces. Look at that guy. Holy heck. If everybody follows him, our chances will be very slim. Is that Jesus? No, no. These are grumpy old people. And this is Paul talking now who used to be Saul. This is confusing. If everybody follows him, our chances will be very slim to keep the leadership that's ours, and we may lose all of our powers. To solve this problem once for all, the men decided to kill Paul. <gasps> They're going to kill him. Uh-oh. The men... Yeah, uh, boy! Uh, it's right. They shouldn't want to kill Paul. But listen to this. They had some killers lie in wait at each and every city gate. Look at Wait, this. Is that a firework over there? Oh, I don't that? know. I don't know. It's, a, it's a firework in a picture. No, that's just the. Oh, yeah, it looks kind of like it, doesn't it? But look here. Look at there. They have people waiting at every gate. They're looking for Paul. These guys at the gate, they're looking for Paul. It is a firework. Don't worry about it. So, let me see here. Like many cities of the day, Damascus kept its foes away. Foes would be enemies. By building huge high walls of stone, one entered by the gates alone. So, if you wanted to enter into the city, you had to go in through these gates. So, they had people looking for Paul. Uh-oh, now it's nighttime. Now it's nighttime. What's, what's Paul doing over here? What's Paul doing? <gasps> Look there. Oh, he's not going to know. He's, he's is he going to escape? Do you think he'll escape and get away from the bad people? Yeah! Yeah, watch this. Paul headed for Jerusalem, but first he had to get by them. He chose the most unusual way to leave Damascus on that day. His friends brought ropes, both stout and long. They got a basket, big and strong. Into the basket they put Paul and let him down outside the wall. Paul is going down outside the wall in that basket. How cool is that? Think what a basket, wait, think what a basket fool that was. It was so critical because God mightily then used this man to carry out his mission plan. God made sure that he was rescued. Look down here are the guards. He's going down here and over here are the guards. So he's got to be very careful. Why? Because if they catch him, the guards are down here. If they catch him, they'll kill him. Oh my gosh. That's scary, isn't it? Yeah, I wanted to do that. I wouldn't do that. Would you want to do that? I wouldn't want to kill them. But no, no, we wouldn't want to do that. We're, we know we shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff, huh? Why? Because that's what God tells us. We're supposed to love people, huh? We're not supposed to hurt people, huh? Why? Okay, but look here. We have two pages left. Two whole pages. Paul sailed the seas and walked the ask earth. Ask God to kill them. Well, we don't want to ask God to kill anyone. We'll let God take care of them. But Ask God to kill the bad guys. Well, how about if we ask God to protect the good guy? How about if we do that instead? Do you yeah. think that would be better? We ask pray, God to pray, pray. Pray. Pray, Lord, protect Paul as he goes on his travels. He's doing your will, Lord, and we ask that you protect him and keep him safe. From all the bad guys. And, and then keep them away from the bad guys and don't let him kill them. That's right. We should be praying that Paul gets away. So Wait, let's no tell tell God don't let the bad guys kill. Don't dear Lord, don't let the bad guys kill. We don't want anyone to be hurt, do we? No. Okay. Even when I go in, don't let them kill. Us. That's right. We don't want anyone to hurt us. So Paul sailed the seas and walked the earth. 
and preached for all that he was worth. To earn his way, he'd sent a tent. Wait. To earn his way, he'd sew a tent. So to make a living, he made tents. Then wrote half the New Testament. He wrote a lot of the Bible that we read today. Paul preached to Jews and Gentiles too. He said, the Savior came for you. He died to pay for all your sin. And on the third day, he rose again. Hey, that, what? did he get away from the bad guys? He got away from the bad guys. Look, he's on a boat. He got away from the bad guys. And then he went to other lands. He went to different places and he preached to everyone. Yep, he was on a boat. He got away. Oh, what about those? I don't know. That message still is sure and true for Jesus is your Savior too. With faith in him but you was can... He right there? Well, they're just showing him at different times. So they're showing that he was in a boat, he got away, he traveled by land, he went to different cities, different places and preached. Right here he's preaching. With faith in him, which is Jesus, you can be sure that you're eternally secure. We put our faith in Jesus and he'll protect us. He'll keep us safe from harm. He'll be with us always. Is that it? That's it for I'm this book. And that was a wonderful book. Paul, what was Paul's other name? Oh, I don't listen to that Look, one. Look, what was Paul's other name? What did we call him? Saul. Saul, yep. And then his name was changed to Paul. Yep. When he became a follower of Jesus, his name was changed to Paul. Then they get bad again. Well, he'll stay good. Paul stays good for the rest of his life. He preached Jesus everywhere he went. I don't shock me. No, nope, it's not going to shock you. But you know what the great thing is? When Jesus comes into our hearts, he changes us. We become a new person. So we have to keep that in mind. That Some of us, at oh, different I'm times of our life... Oh. Whoops, there goes the camera. Put that down. It's stuck on the thing. There. Some of us, at different times in our lives, can be like Saul. We can persecute Christians, people, whoever, but... When God gets into our hearts, Ooh, He changes who we are. We become a new creation. We become a new person. And sometimes in the Bible, God changed people's names when they started to follow Him. Okay, ready to watch Monster uh, Jack Monster. wants to watch Monster House. Ready? We have seen this okay, movie 553 hey, times. Is it, is it when it's... Well, your drum does it go off automatically? No, uh, it doesn't go off automatically. I've got to shut it off. Hey, wait. Bear on the other side. Wait, Hold on. I'm going to try it. Try what? I'm going to try to be on the other side. Wait, let's tell everybody. Let's tell everybody goodbye. 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 We'll see you next time on... Okay. Talk Time. time. What? Right, don't turn it off. Thanks for joining Jack and I today for Paul's Great Basket Caper. And you can find this story in the Bible in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 25. And what can we as adults learn from this story? Well, we can learn that God can change anyone's heart. Saul was a pretty wicked man. He killed Christians. He was at the stoning of Stephen. He was a person who hated Christians. He had hate in his heart. So, but when Jesus came into the picture, Jesus asked him, why are you persecuting me? Well, the reason is that Saul was blind. He couldn't see. He thought he was doing right, but he could not see. And when we accept who Jesus is, when we open our hearts to him, he takes those scales off of our eyes and he opens our eyes so that we can see. We can see him. We can see his kingdom. And God's kingdom is all about love. So when we harm others, we are not living in God's kingdom. Um, also, too, when we have a change of heart, because God is in the softening of hearts business, uh, before we come to Christ and know him, our hearts can be hardened. So we're not willing to listen to what God is telling us. But once we have changed and people witness that change, we can be a testimony. We can show them how big our God is and what he can do. So... Sometimes it's hard for people to accept that you changed. Saul, even though his name was changed to Paul, the disciples really didn't trust him at first, and, and with good reason, because he was a murderer. But with God, people can change. So if somebody says, hey, you can't change, or they're still getting on you for your past sins, just let them know that you are a new person in Christ. You have new life. 
You are a new being and God is at work in your life. Let's say a word of prayer. Thank you, God, that because of you we are no longer blind. We can see you for who you are, and that is everything that is good in this world. And because of you, we can love others and ourselves. We just thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. See you next week on Talk Time.